Are you struggling to get a professional sounding acoustic guitar in your mix? In this video, we're going to walk through the EQ steps to get a clean and professional sounding acoustic guitar. Welcome back to the band guide where we use GarageBand to make professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin. Let's dive in. All right, so the first thing we want to do is listen. The first thing you should always do before you think about EQing is just listening to the source and determining if you think it needs it. Sometimes you can hear things it needs in the context of the mix. Sometimes you want to check in solo. So we're going to do a little bit of both and just decide if we even need EQ on this track. So I'd say, yeah, I, overall it's a good enough recording. You definitely want to decide too at this stage, is this a good enough recording? Do I need to get a better recording? Because EQ can't fix everything. You need to know if the recording's good enough, and if not, sometimes you have to re-record. This is a good enough recording, especially for this song. If this was really featuring the acoustic guitar, I might want to re-record it and get a little more uh, out of the acoustic guitar, just get a little more body, a little more warmth. But because the goal with this acoustic guitar is to really add a little more of the drive that the upper frequencies that you get with an acoustic guitar, uh, we don't need that full range in the same way. So I think this is a plenty good enough recording. It doesn't have like room reverberations. It doesn't sound kind of weird in that way. So plenty good enough recording. Uh, and then we have three goals anytime we're EQing. Minimize the bad, highlight the good, and make space for every source. You don't necessarily always have to do all three of those goals, but that's what's in the back of your mind. So the first thing that I'm hearing with this is kind of just a low end rumble, and that doesn't need to be there on this acoustic track. This acoustic track is a small part in an entire mix. Uh, this mix only has so much sonic space. Any mix only has so much sonic space. And those frequencies are gonna get in the way of the bass guitar and the kick drum that kind of need some of that sonic space. So I'll show you that just a little bit more in just a minute, but we don't need some of those. So we're gonna get rid of some of those frequencies or at least minimize them. And then we wanna minimize anything that's bad that's not really helping the sound, that makes it sound a way that we don't love. Uh, there's definitely some mid-range like boxiness kind of some tinniness going on with this acoustic that I want to just kind of cut out a little bit, just minimize a little bit. With EQ be, or with acoustics, because they're a natural instrument, you don't want to do crazy EQ moves. You want to have kind of subtle EQ moves. You can have big-ish moves if you need to, but we're not going to completely cut anything out because that wouldn't sound natural. So we're just going to do small moves on this acoustic. And then the last thing is I wanna find a little bit of brightness to kind of pull it up into that range a little bit more, help it cut through the mix just a little bit more. Again, subtle. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's listen to this uh, with the EQ open here. And the first thing I wanna point out is this frequency here. It's right around 100. Listen to this on its own. That's just nasty. So we're gonna get rid of that and also get rid of all this rumble that's down here at the same time. We're just gonna use a high pass filter for that. So we're just gonna pull this up until it's getting rid of things that we don't necessarily want on this source. Uh, and then that's all. High pass filters are nice and easy. So let's listen to it while we're doing it. So we know we wanna at least be up over this a little bit. I want a, a little bit of a stipper EQ. So this is one of the cool new features GarageBand just updated and I just updated to this new uh, interface here, uh, new operating system. And this is a really cool new feature. So they allow you to now adjust the Q right here or the slope in this case uh, on this point of EQ with these bars right here. It's a really nice feature. They've had it in Logic for a while. So I don't necessarily need to fully cut that out, but getting it around this point in the curve, it's just gonna minimize it quite a bit. So it's a little more balance of a tone. If you're listening to it, it kind of doesn't happen consistently either. It's not always there. So this will help it be a little more consistent throughout. So I think around here was sounding pretty good. Yeah, so that get, gets rid of that problem. Now we wanna find those other frequencies. Now this is a good example of it. 
works to do some things in solo, but some things you need to do in the context of the mix. So especially if I'm trying to find frequencies I've already identified as sounding a little boxy to me, I wanna go in and find those specific frequencies that are getting in the way. It's okay to do that in solo. But if I'm trying to add especially, you definitely wanna do that in the context of the mix. So let's listen to this uh, and find those frequencies in solo, these boxy frequencies. So boxy is typically kind of low mid range, right around the mid range. Uh, so starting around here, we're going to tighten this Q a little bit. Okay, so right around 500. And then you can use this bar, this is a new feature, you can use this to just pull that same frequency down and I can't accidentally mess up the exact frequency. That's a really nice update. So just around five and a half again, we don't want to do crazy changes here anywhere, four to six, whatever is sounding good to you. Uh, and then we're hearing some tinniness, right? Some just like weird, it's still in that boxy range, but a little bit more like papery. That tends to be, oh yeah, I'm already hearing it in this frequency range. That tends to be somewhere around here. Now be careful when you're sweeping because all frequencies can sound really weird if you set a really narrow cue and you just sweep all over at adding 15, 20 decibels. So we want to be focused in our sweeps here. Yeah, it's definitely the worst. So it's subtle, again, we're not doing a lot. Okay, so we've gotten rid of that. Let's listen to just bypass this and listen to this with and without that. So we're cutting out those low frequencies, especially in this case, as soon as you bypass that plugin, you can really hear those weird frequencies. Listen to this. Subtle changes, if you're listening to good headphones, you can definitely hear it. So we've now made a little bit of space uh, and we've minimized the bad. Let's start highlighting the good. This acoustic has some great upper frequencies that really help drive this mix forward. Let's go in the context of the mix here, take it out of solo, and we're just gonna boost the signal on this output gain. Now this is the last feature I'll mention that's new in this update. Uh, you used to only have 0.5 decibels here increments that you could go up, now you can do it infinitely in point, point 0.1 in decibel increments. So really, really nice feature. If I'm trying to find something in the context of the mix, I'd like to boost here because then I don't mess up my static mix on this fader and I can always reset this easily. So where you have it boosted here and we're just gonna find some of those brighter frequencies, those presence frequ frequencies, that's typically like 3K and up, so like 3000 hertz and up. We're gonna find a couple things, one or two things in there that sound good to us in the context of this mix and just give it a little boost. Higher, higher. So found the frequencies, boosted them kind of extreme to find them, and then I halved it, quartered it, dialed it way back so it's more natural sounding. You can do bigger boosts in this and bigger cuts in this, but in general, you want kind of subtle changes. The subtle changes add up to professional sounding mixes. So let's listen to this. Uh, well, actually, before we do that, last thing we want to do, go into solo again, and we just want to balance this output so that we can really assess, does it sound better or does it sound louder? If it sounds, if it's just louder because of the EQ, then we don't know if it's better. It just sounds louder and our ears tend to favor louder. So let's balance the output volume here. I think maybe bring this down just a little bit.
Yeah, so that's about the same volume now. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna listen to this in the context of the mix. I'm gonna bring up uh, the volume in the context of the mix here so that you can really hear it. And I'll bypass it and turn it back on a few times. Notice that you hear it better with the EQ on and that when it's off, there's some mid range that's much more present when the EQ is off. So just pay attention to that as we're listening to it. Higher, higher. So obviously that's really loud in the mix, but it sounds better, right? Now those mid-range frequencies, those kind of sound funky and there's a lot of sources that will have some frequencies there and some they'll sound totally fine on, uh, but if you are noticing it in individual tracks and you cut a little bit in individual tracks and you notice kind of a buildup of it in your mix in general, if you have a little bit of shaping on individual tracks, a little bit of shaping on your master track fader, you're just gonna get a cleaner, clearer, individual or overall sound and that's the goal of eq is just clean things up and get the best sound possible eq is definitely the most powerful tool and the first tool that you should be grabbing in a mix after you've set all your proper levels uh, but you don't need it on every channel now if you want to go a little bit further with eq i'm actually developing something really cool and exciting right now I'm putting together an entire course called EQ Expert. It's going to walk through everything you need to know to truly become an expert with EQ. EQ is the most powerful tool you have in mixing, and this will help you find all the ranges, listen to something, really know, okay, this there's something weird going on in that low mid range, and then also understand what's going on behind the scenes with EQ, how it works, what it's doing, why it exists at all, and if you know all these things and you can pull up an EQ, you know when to pull up an EQ and when you pull it up, you know exactly where to go, what frequencies to attack to get the best sounding mix possible, it's gonna change your life. Mastering EQ, becoming an EQ expert will change your mixing life, I guarantee it. So this course is not out yet. If you want to be the first to hear about it, I have a wait list below that you can get on. With that, I'm also gonna send you right now my free EQ cheat sheet that just walks through several little things about EQ to help you start getting better mixes right now. So be sure to grab that. There's a link in the description below where you can sign up for that wait list and grab that free EQ cheat sheet. If this video is helpful for you, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next week with another video.